first, let's give it up for the Gay and Lesbian Freedom Band, the official band of San Francisco. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be here because we're listening to some live music for a change, right? And San Francisco is truly coming alive. And one of the things that happened at the beginning of this pandemic, so many of us basically said, I hope San Francisco will do a better job at some of the construction projects so that they don't interfere with my commute to work or to school when the city begins to reopen. Well, in some cases, we couldn't necessarily do that. But the good news is we have an incredible leader in Jeff Tumlin. We have an amazing department, MTA, and thank you, Sharon Lai, the commissioner from MTA, who's joining us here today. They knew that this was an opportunity, an opportunity to make significant improvements to Muni. Because let me tell you, as we begin to open our city and begin down the path of recovery, having a good public transportation system is going to be critical. Now, some of the nuts and bolts mostly don't sound really exciting to people, but they're exciting for, to the people who ride Muni, who, for example, want to access the internet when they're underground. This is something I've been working on since I was supervisor, and I think uh, Senator Scott Weiner was actually on the Board of Supervisors helping for this cause. But here's the good news. Today, we have some major announcements. A lot of the work that we were able to do made it, it's making it possible to make Muni more efficient than ever. It was a struggle, yes, but we are in a very, very good place. We're asking for people to be patient. So here's what we have planned. First of all, the F-Line, the historic cars, the museum that's over there that talks about the history of rail in San Francisco and, and, and just how important it is. Bringing those cars back is really important, not just for transportation, but for tourism. The F-Line that goes from the Castro to Fisherman's Wharf, the ones with the open covers and the closed covers, those lines are starting back tomorrow. But there's more. Underground. I know we miss the Injuda. I know we miss the different underground trains that we take that take us from downtown all the way to the west side in rapid speed when it's working right, right? Well, guess what? Muni Underground is coming back effective tomorrow. But we've made some improvements. We did a lot of the underground work. And you know how sometimes you get stuck in that tunnel at Church Street, and you're like, man, and all the trains get backed up because our system wasn't necessarily equipped to handle the number of riders that we see that are joining our muni system coming from this place and that place. And Jeff Tumlin had the foresight to look at this along with a number of experts in transportation. And we're going to be combining the T and the K line. And we're going to be making that line more efficient. But let me tell you, I'm most excited about this because this is something I've been working on again since supervisor. The Injuda will have two car trains in every instance instead of one. So for all those folks who wait at Carl and Cole, where I used to campaign at when I was supervisor at the early stages of my political involvement, finally a promise delivered of providing better service for the Injuna. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the Injuda. Just imagine being late to work and school all the time because of the Injuda. Uh, the other thing that will happen, which is really great, I think, is we'll have Wi-Fi underground finally. We'll have um, public art, uh, and there'll be better, more efficient service. So I can tell you this, but you're going you're gonna to experience it. When you're riding Muni, you're going to feel the difference. That's what we want. And we also have a special surprise because there are a number of celebrities. Now, I wouldn't call myself a celebrity, but I was listed on the list as a celebrity announcer. There will be a number of celebrity announcement, announcers and your mayor making public announcements welcoming you back to San Francisco's Muni trains. And that includes the voice of the San Francisco Giants, Rennell Brooks Moon. It includes... 40, former 49er, and always will be a 49er in my eyes, Jerry Rice. 
And there's also one other person, legendary actor B.D. Wong. So some great voices you'll hear, including mine. So this is a good day for San Francisco. We're on our road to recovery. We have, you know, a need to make sure our transportation system is up and running and getting us from point A to point B. I want you all to return to Muni. I want you all to be patient with us. We're keeping our car, cars clean. We're trying to keep service working more efficiently. And I want to just take this opportunity to especially thank many of the drivers of our trains and our buses. Because let me tell you, this pandemic has hit our city hard. But when you look at the city data of the city employees who were the most impacted by COVID, it was many of our drivers who were on the front line. They put their lives on the line to continue to make sure our essential workers and people got to and from work. So I really want to thank them for being here today. Thank you all so much, TWU. Thank you for the work that you all continue to do to be there for the people of San Francisco. And so make sure that you treat your drivers with kindness and respect because they go through a lot in this city trying to get people around. Let me also thank all the construction workers, all the MTA staff, all of the park and control officers, all of the folks who have been out there trying to direct traffic and do all the things that make sure that we can efficiently get from point A to point B. It's a new day in San Francisco. I appreciate you all being here. We're here with a number of other various officials that are going to be speaking. I know I've went on for way, way too long, but at this time, I want to introduce someone who has been a true champion of public transportation for this city. And I miss him when he was in San Francisco fighting the good fight, but I'm excited even more about his fight in Sacramento and the work that he's doing, which is why the governor is making a big announcement about a significant increase in support for transportation. No one, no one is as aggressive in getting support, financial support for this city and this state for public public transportation to make it better and more efficient for all of us than our state senator Scott Weiner. Thank you Madam Mayor. Um, I have to say I do miss when uh, the mayor and I were on the board of supervisors together and we were uh, probably a little irritating uh, to MTA at, at times because we were always pushing and pushing uh, but in the end we were all able to work together uh, to make Muni run better. And, and, and so thank you, Madam Mayor, for your uh, leadership. Uh, and uh, thank you to Jeff Tumlin, uh, who I was just so excited when he uh, agreed uh, to come in at the MTA. He's just an exceptional leader uh, and, and visionary. Uh, and, and Jeff and I actually rode Muni from Castro Market here today. Uh, it felt like the, the old days when we would get on Muni and take the F Market all the way uh, down, uh, down Market Street. And now that's going to be the new days because the F is coming back, and that is so exciting. So I have a pretty long relationship with Muni. I've been a regular daily Muni rider since 1997. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously in Sacramento, I'm not riding it, um, but when I'm here, I ride it every day. And it was a seven day a week thing for me. It was how I commuted. Uh, I didn't drive my car to City Hall when I was on the Board of Supervisors. I took Muni. Uh, and thank you again to the Muni drivers who have gotten me around for 23, almost 24 years here, uh, and who have stood with us during this terrible pandemic. Uh, and so this matters to me personally, but it also matters to my community. Uh, so many people in this city are dependent on Muni. Don't, they don't have a car. Muni is how they get around. It's how they get to work. It's how they get to the doctor. It's how they go shopping. Uh, and so the idea, when we were starting to hear things during the pandemic about would, there we go. I'll just wait a second. Okay, you can hear me. I'll compete against the bell. So when we were hearing during the, this pandemic that what, what would Muni be like after COVID? Would Muni still be around in the same way? Were we going to lose an enormous number of lines? Was BART still going to be around in the same way? 
I think for a lot of us, it was really scary because San Francisco would not be San Francisco without Muni. San Francisco would not be the transit-oriented, climate-friendly place that we are without Muni. It is part of not just our lifeblood, but our core values as a city and as a community. And so I am so excited that Muni is going to come back as strong as ever. The subway, the F market, we're going to keep these bus lines riding because so many people rely on the buses as much as we love the subway. Uh, and I am optimistic about where this agency is going to head. Uh, I want to really thank Congress and our federal government for throwing repeated lifelines to Muni, to BART, to all of our transit systems. Had Congress not stepped up and dramatically funded transit multiple times, we would not be here today. I don't know where Muni would be. I don't know how we would get reopened. How do you do that? Where would BART be? So what the federal government did was absolutely life-saving for these transit systems. Uh, and we are working very hard at the state level to make sure that this amazing budget surplus that we have because of income taxes and because of our federal stimulus relief, that we are using a portion of that for transit and other sustainable transportation. And the governor just made a big announcement today, uh, and I'm very, very excited about what we're going to be able to put in as a state. So again, thank you to everyone. Thank you, Muni, for helping get us around. Uh, and let's just keep fighting to make this agency and this system as amazing as it can be. Thank you. I am so grateful to have a state senator who I can randomly run into on my morning commute on Muni. Um, I am so grateful to Mayor London Breed and Scott Wiener's support uh, in helping us come back, and as Scott said, also to the federal government, because we would not be here today. Um, we're also going to be grateful to the state for using some of their surplus on capital investment, because while we've made a lot of progress in the subway over the last 14 months, we still have a janky 90s era train control system that operates on five and a quarter inch floppy disks. So things will be better tomorrow, but they are not going to be perfect. What I can promise you, though, is we will continue to be honest with the public about the state of our condition, uh, what uh, our service is like, and what you can do if things don't work as well as we'd hoped. Um, that has been my overall strategy um, as director of the SFMTA, is a strategy of brutal honesty about the reality we face. We're also grateful for so many community partners who have helped us come back and who continue to advocate for our success. One of our most important partners is Market Street Railway. Um, and so I would like to introduce the director of the Market Street Railway, Rick Lobsher. Rick. Thank you, Jeff. Isn't it great to be vaccinated? Isn't it great to be vaccinated? Let's all thank the mayor for her leadership in bringing us through the fog of this pandemic. You've been, you've been a great light to the city, Mayor Breed. And thanks to Jeff and Julie Kirschbaum and the entire Muni team, MTA team, um, from the very top all the way through the ranks to the frontline people who made this happen. You know, a famous leader in America, another great woman leader, said it takes a village. That's what made the return of the F line possible. It was all up and down the MTA pulling together with operators taking the initiative to say, we want to come back and how can we help? They helped design the protective barriers you will see in the streetcar uh, as it pulls up. And in all the streetcars you ride on the F line, uh, you'll be able to be, the operators will be safe. And this is a very positive development. It was a real collaborative effort. And the shop team put them in at an unprecedented pace. I have never seen such collaboration in my 40 years around Muni, so I want to hear a shout out for the operators and the maintainers. I also want to give a shout out to all the business leaders uh, and the neighborhood groups, the centr uh, CBDs and BIDs and all those alphabet agencies that put, bring our businesses, our small businesses together to make their neighborhoods a better place to do business. They stepped up, they talked to their district supervisors, they talked to Jeff, they got results. 
and the folks in Castro, uh, Samud Masari, and Andrea Yellow, the people up at the wharf, Randall Scott, and on and on and on. They've all done a great job. Are there any neighborhood representatives here? Uh, yes? Great. And Robbie Silver also from downtown. So, and Karen Flood from Union Square, they were all here. Yes. Uh, you, guys were, you guys were all great. Um, one, one more shout out is to Michael Deller, an old friend who has been a stalwart businessman here at uh, One Market Restaurant for a long time. He stepped up to us when said, what can we do to get the F-Line going? And by the way, we would like to give you a percentage of every, the proceeds from every Reuben we sell in our new deli uh, across the street. And uh, so that goes on for another week. So you're helping us, our nonprofit, when you help yourself to a Reuben. And, uh, you know, that's a Brooklyn sandwich, but, I mean, that's a San Francisco kind of uh, generosity, and we appreciate that. It's all part of our San Francisco village. It's a city that honors its heritage while it strives to correct mistakes we have made in excluding people, denigrating people, and keeping people down. We work to make this city better all the time, and that's what our future is. Uh, that fits right in with our organization's uh, motto, which is keeping the past present in the future. And we are glad that these streetcars are going back to work, helping to rebuild our economy, helping to carry people where they want to go, help, helping to draw visitors back to our city. Um, we're going to be riding on this wonderful boat tram, and that vehicle was brought by our nonprofit along with a second one to San Francisco years ago. And uh, our board is led by our chair, Carmen Clark, who is here, and I want to shout out to Carmen, who used to run Muni in, in her uh, more enlightened days. And our board members, Ron Fisher, Chris Arvin, and Kat Siegel are here. And uh, we are proud to, to have done that and to have told the story in our museum of how transit built a livable city and keeps renewing it. So we're open over there. Go in and take, get a free calendar from us because the rest of the year is going to be a lot better than the, the months we've had. Thanks to our mayor, thanks to this team. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Rick. Um, while many of us spent the pandemic uh, behind our computer screens at home in our pajamas, the entire SFMTA frontline crews have been out there every single day during the pandemic getting essential workers to work. I am so grateful for their resilience and hard work through all of this. They are why I work the hours that I do. And so I would like to introduce um, one of our operators, Elena Galloway, who's worked at the agency for over 25 years with 19 years of safe driving experience and somebody whom we rely upon for her direct advice. Ms. Galloway. Good afternoon. There are some expressions of gratitude and order. Thank you to Mayor London Breed, the TWU Local 250A PCC Committee led by President Roger Marenko, Market Street Railway, Rick Lobster, President, Engineer, Body, and PCC Shop for their meticulous craftsmanship when building the operator's safety enclosures. San Francisco Board of Supervisors, Citizens Advisory Committee, thank you to SFMTA for placing the F-Line back in business. Like Rick Lobster said, it takes a village to get our diverse historic fleet rolling again. From Castro and Market to the Westfield Shopping Center, past the Railway Museum, down the Embarcadero to Pier 39, and then on to Fisherman's Wharf. The F-Line transporting a diverse ridership in our diverse city on a uniquely diverse historic streetcar from all around the world. Our cars are so unique that people travel far and wide to get photo ops or just to get a ride. Now, along with San Francisco's resilience and survival instinct, that's something to be proud of. It is an honor and a pleasure to be a PCC operator in the city of San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen,
Please help me help you arrive at your destination safely by wearing your mask and practicing all CDC guidelines. Thank you, and I'll see you out there. Um, getting through the pandemic has required all sorts of new partnerships. Um, it's required a depth of partnership across almost every city department. And so I'd also like to introduce uh, the director of the port, um, Elaine Forbes, who is here, along with uh, our key policymakers, um, including uh, Sharon Lai, who is on the SFMTA board, um, and of course, a member of the Board of Supervisors, Asha Safai. And and finally, in order to introduce our last speaker, I want to say that while the SFMTA is mostly about mobility, we are about so many other things as well. Um, our vehicles are a symbol of San Francisco and support the visitor economy. We are also a primary driver of supporting small business success, which is why we have been such staunch supporters of the Shared Spaces program from the very beginning. And one of the many reasons we are so happy to be bringing back the F-Line is the way in which it directly supports small business recovery. So now I'd like to introduce Joseph Ahern, who's the owner of El Porteño Restaurant here at the Ferry Building, to say a few words. Um, thank you, Mayor Breed, for uh, inviting me to speak. And uh, forgive me if um, if I sound a little nervous. I'm a, I'm a baker, not a speaker. <laughs> um, I, I also want to say thanks to the SFMTA for um, reopening the upline. Um, I run a bakery line, and I don't, that is a challenge. Um, I can't imagine running a whole transit line. Um, so my name is uh, Joey Ahern, and um, as I said, I open I. Uh, my wife and I opened El Porteño Empanadas uh, in 2008. And we started primarily at farmer's markets, um, which eventually led us to a spot in the, the ferry building. Um, in, in that time, um, I guess we've been in the ferry building for about 10 years, and in that time we've, um, we've, uh, been in, we've enjoyed the crowds, um, shoulder to shoulder crowds of international travelers, um, Bay Area commuters, and then also experienced challenges uh, more recently over course of the last year with the pandemic pandemic um, but with the ferry building being open during the whole time you know it gave us and our colleagues in in the the marketplace the opportunity to continue to service um, our community to um, give our employees a, a place to work and really was a, a lifeline to um, to keep to, to, to stay open um, so with that I I, with the farmers market and, and the marketplace, um, I've um, I've been firsthand witness to see what um, public uh, free, I'm sorry, uh, 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 um, easily accessible uh, transportation does to uh, a small uh, economy. It not only um, it not only brings more traffic into the areas, but it also brings a more diverse um, crowd. I think some of our customers would probably not. Um, come make it to us without um, places uh, or lines like the the up line and the other one so um, and with I think right now as we see San Francisco and the Bay Area seeing a, a recovery it's a it's a, it's it's a great time to be opening up um, the the F line it's not only is it um, a beautiful uh, st uh, streetcar uh, it's it's um, I mean it's it's uh, it, it's also a need uh, that that allow uh, bringing people into into the area. I think um, uh, I have always. I think the the cable cars are the world. The world can have the cable cars, but I think those street cars are are ours. They're they're you know they're very San Francisco, um, and um, so. Just, um, I'm really looking forward to welcoming back our um, a lot of the customers, and um, really want to um, um, say thanks to to everybody. So, thank you very much.
Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, I just want to take a moment to say how excited I am to see Alina here today. And I didn't recognize her because she still looks the same since I was a kid. Her mother, her grandmother, Miss Redmond, used to press my hair and all the kids' hair in the neighborhood, in the back of her house. You could get a press for $8, and if you didn't have enough money, her, her, her grandmother would let you slide. And that was, her grandmother was like less than 100 pounds, the cutest woman you ever want to see, but the toughest woman you ever want to meet, those hands were brutal. She would get your hair straight as nails. And I'm so excited to see her, someone who's been working for Muni for so many years, along with so many people who have an incredible history in this city. And that same history that has existed for some time, our resilience, and how we've been able to look back and use the examples and the mistakes and the challenges that existed in the past to bring us forward towards the future is exactly how we're going to recover as a city. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. And let me also just say it's Small Business Month in San Francisco for the month of May. Stop by some of the small businesses, provide some support, uh, go to our restaurants and different places all over the city, hop on Muni to do that, smile and say hi to your Muni drivers, and enjoy and be patient with us as we continue down our path of recovery for our city. Thank you all so much for joining us here today.